What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is April 27th of 2022. First off, I want to say thank you so much to everyone that has been tuning in and watching these videos. I'm loving the comments, loving the engagement. You guys are awesome. You guys are really the reasons why I do these videos. Today we had another crazy day in the market. We had the aftermath of Google and Microsoft earnings. And then after the bell, we got Facebook earnings. So let's talk about all the details. Let's dive right in and we'll start with our box scores. S&P 500, it finished out up 0.28%, little mini bounce. NASDAQ QQQ finished down 0.12%. We had the IWM small caps finishing down 0.42%. Dogs of the Dow were up 0.17%. And we had the ARK Innovation ETF. This thing's still getting crushed down 2.21% we can see that the volatility came in quite a bit on all of these indices. And you can see pretty much everything it closed towards the lower third of its day's range. If you are a trend trader, really just an active trader, this is one of those days where you could really get banged up if you were chasing the market into strength and or selling into the weakness. Breadth was pretty mixed. My trend model is still at a negative three. Finviz heat map, so we had big old Microsoft, one of the biggest names in the S&P 500. This one reported earnings as well as Google. And whenever you're looking at this Finviz heat map, just know the bigger the square, the bigger market cap, and the bigger the influence of that stock on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So everyone was worried heading into Microsoft and Google. Remember we had that huge sell off yesterday and lo and behold, these stocks pretty much canceled each other out. So no move. Now what happens is when the volatility indices like the VIX and the volatility index of the NASDAQ, the VXN, when those are extremely bid up, you know, the VIX is above a 30, NASDAQ vol was up at like a 38 this morning. When they are that bid, unless you're getting huge volatile moves to the downside, it gets very tough for the market to sustain that level of volatility. If the market is not going down, there becomes this gravitational pull on the market to move higher. Even though we sort of bottomed out or chopped out a low, whatever you want to call it, the underlying sectors, they were still pretty weak. So overall, this is a bloodbath. I'm seeing a lot of names get massacred. It's a lot of the less liquid growth stocks. We did have some bright spots though. The solar energy stocks were up almost 3% today. And we had Chinese technology companies up 5.19%. Style factors. We had our international momentum style factors up 0.65%. That one, pretty rare leader as well as international value makes sense with these Chinese names being so strong. Let's take a look here. We'll go into our headline indices and then we will talk about my trades and the landscape heading into the rest of this week. So the S&P 500 look right here, we're trading at the bottom end of this monthly value area. And when we zoom out to the weekly chart, we're pretty much pressing up right against those year to date lows. So this is a very logical place for the market to actually bottom out, assuming we don't get some, oh, Apple reports earnings and it's down 20% or one of those big binary events. Now we ended up finishing out with a bounce, which is great. So suddenly that opens the door to potentially a retest of this downward trend line. So the further away you get from the downward trend line, the better the risk reward is to play for a bounce, even when the market trend is negative. As you get closer to that downward trend line though, if you are playing for a bounce, that's typically where you wanna be dishing off some of your risk, taking targets, etc. Let's zoom out to the weekly chart because we're trading at very significant levels. Look at this. So right here we are in this downward trend line, right? We're in a down auction and this is our yearly point, our yearly value area. This 4186 level, we retested it for the fifth time this year. And if you've been watching these videos, you hear me say all the time, the higher number of times we retest this level, the weaker it's gonna get. Eventually it's gonna give way, but so far it's looking like another successful retest. If I was short right now, which I'm not, now's certainly not a time I would wanna be pressing those shorts. Let's put it that way. Even though the overall trend of the market is negative. Let's jump over to our NASDAQ. Those stocks were definitely in play today. I actually traded the NASDAQ actively. And you can see the NASDAQ 
we closed right at resistance which is the bottom of this monthly value area russell 2000 pretty much in no man's land this thing is the ugliest out of all the indices i am certainly not touching this one the dow jones dogs of the dow it looks like it's holding this monthly point of control but i'm primarily at this point most focused on these are my trades for today again when the market when my trend model is at a negative three i want to make sure that i don't get caught playing in traffic so take a look here. I bought some NASDAQ calls yesterday. When I bought them, the market proceeded to decline like another 1%. So I didn't get the best trade location on those. What I did as we had that run higher in the market in the first 15 minutes, I sold them out for essentially a scratch. I made a couple cents on them. I closed them out for 11.51, I had paid 11.43. And I'm pretty honest here. So I jumped the gun a bit on this scalp and got a poor location on the entry. Now I'm still short the TQQQ puts, which will benefit me if the NASDAQ lifts higher. And by having that humility and just being like, let me get out of this thing for essentially a scratch and made some pennies on it. Then I got an opportunity to take another cut at it later in the day. So literally at 10.06, like 15 minutes later, the NASDAQ had come in. I got into those same call options for $9.99. I was able to scalp those out for $10.60. Yeah, I always call this, like you can see here, I made some lunch money. It's not really a big trade, but again, we're in a negative three environment. So my goal isn't really like, oh, let me hit a home run here. That's not really the objective. It's really just preserve capital. And if I can participate, then yeah, I'll go ahead and take a trade. Uh, towards the latter stages of the day, there was this headline that facebook's earnings went out and it ended up being a fake headline but i saw the market was kind of holding even after those earnings came out so i bought some qqq june calls so i got the 321 strike for 1562 and i held those into the close other than that i basically day traded the queues and lo and behold facebook ended up reporting earnings and it didn't do so bad so let's take a look at facebook in the after hours and we had a bunch of encouraging reactions to earnings like facebook is trading up at 207. now i received the question today like you know what's going on with facebook like this thing is having a monster move keep in mind this is your context look at this um, I took a screenshot of this earlier. Let me pull this up. Yeah, look right here. Goldman Prime this is from Zero Hedge. It's their prime brokerage desk. They have information on what a lot of hedge funds and big institutions are doing. They, they keep that data. The cumulative net selling across the Fang M stock complex over the past week was the largest over any five day period year to date. So basically what that's telling you is everyone is dumping the Fang stocks, essentially the NASDAQ. They've been dumping it at record pace for the year so even if Facebook just reports numbers that are like so-so, there's room for that stock to move to the upside. So that's exactly what we were getting after hours. It's a bit of a bounce, which is good. It's a nice move, but take a look in the grand scheme, like on this weekly chart, it's not really anything all that significant. We're bouncing back to levels we were at last week. So overall, nothing crazy, but for the sustainability of this market, and the market potentially going into a tailspin, it definitely helps that we actually got a good reaction here. And I noticed we actually got a few good reactions. I'll share with you. This is my Benzinga. Take a look here. These are our after hours movers. We had Lending Club up 20% after hours. Facebook, really nice move. A bunch of names, Pinterest as well, is also having a very nice move. So that is a great thing. Qualcomm, they also beat on their earnings and sales. Great, you know, this is awesome. What I was noticing really over the past like week or so of earnings season is that even when companies report good numbers, the stocks just, you know, they're not moving at all or they're selling off or really just not good reactions. That really tells you that the sentiment is very poor. You know, these investment managers, they're really not allocating into the market but the fact that today we actually got some good reactions in the post market that is like the first sign that hey maybe there could be some risk appetite that's a positive divergence that we're seeing in the market of course the names that report weak earnings they are still getting obliterated we had teledoc this thing is down this can't be right is this thing really down 40 percent it's insane but still not completely out of the woods if you really underperform and the key is also if you're a very illiquid name if you're in a liquid name that no one actually has to hold then you're going to get obliterated because no investment managers right now want to be sticking their neck out but if you're a name like facebook that's a popular household name every investment manager owns it it's an all the key indices that's where you just report something half decent and if the expectations are really poor you can actually see a bounce 
All right, so those were our earnings for tonight. Before we wrap, let's give a preview for tomorrow. A lot of these binary event catalysts for earnings are out of the way. We got Microsoft out, Google's out, Facebook is out, but we still have some of these big kahunas left. Tomorrow is Apple and we have Amazon as well. Apple is the highest weighted company in the S&P 500. So we still have to clear that hurdle. If Apple were to whiff and have like a Netflix like performance down 20%, then suddenly, we could be breaking these year-to-date lows on the indices. But if Apple, let's say it's down 4%, it's down 3%, it's flat, then with the volatility indices this bit up, that's where I think we could have the pressure to form a nice balance in these indices. So for that reason, like, yeah, like I said earlier, if you're short in this market and you're killing it, I honestly think at this current juncture, there's more risk on the short side than on the long side. But that being said, my trend model is still at a negative three. I don't want to get too far out in front of it and you know, really just trying to predict a market bottom. All right, guys, with that being said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all had an awesome trading session. And as always, I'll see you all tomorrow.